Hello everyone, uh, this is Min giving you a preview of what's to come for the peer evaluation process for milestones 1, 2, and 3. Uh, you can find the slides for this in Google Drive, but uh, it's at this particular bit.ly link 1j uppercase L C uppercase L V E. So just as a refresher, what we have are three milestones. The milestones come at certain times. There's the May milestone that actually happens on June 1st, which is a Monday. And what we're basically going to look at is the project ideation and project planning as the things that we want you to report. I will try to show you the form in a minute. Um, Later on in Milestone 2, you're going to uh, report at the end of June, basically try to refine the project scope to something meaningful and um, definitely doable within the time remaining, and try to make some progress on your implementation. In the third milestone on the 27th of July um, will be the final milestone, which is the preparation for the actual presentation of your project, your three month project documentation, including a video, and a more implementation project uh, progress reporting, and in certain cases, especially for the higher levels like Apollo 11, as well as Project Gemini, testing of your application. Now, uh, this is the final milestone that uh, you have to complete where your peers are going to evaluate your project. Um, and in many cases, you need to have your system completed by the 27th of July to qualify for a particular level of achievement. However, that doesn't mean you can. Uh, you need to stop there. You can certainly work during the first two weeks of the semester until August 19th, which is uh, uh, week two, Wednesday, where we have splashdown. So if you make a lot of progress between these two weeks, you can change your level of achievement and or argue accordingly that you should be accorded a higher level of uh, achievement if you can do a lot between the 27th and the 19th. And in fact, quite a number of people do that. So splashdown we'll talk about later, but basically this is the finale of Orbital where all teams have to print out an A1 size poster and present it in SR1 at the school competing. So for each milestone, um, let's say on the 1st of June, you'll have to turn in the first milestone, which consists of your project readme and log. And then one week later, you're going to have to do the peer evaluations for all three of your peer teams that you're asked to evaluate. So in your evaluation groups, you have more than three other teams present, but you'll be assigned three teams um, during that week to evaluate. Uh, you'll need to spend uh, roughly about uh, 30 minutes per team uh, to evaluate what they've done. So to recap, uh, in the day of the milestone due, uh, you have to log into the evaluation platform, which I'll show you a little later, called Skylab, and post your group's readme and project log. Um, in one week's time, you will have to fill in the peer evaluations for all peer groups. Again, that's usually three teams. In some cases, there might be four teams. So for evaluation milestone one, uh, we just need to let you know that any critical feedback will show up immediately. But for milestones two and three onwards, critical feedback will show up only after a certain date. And I'll, I'll show you the implications of that later on. Finally, after all three milestones, you'll have a chance to give feedback on your peer evaluations at the end. So the feedback for scores are important for your peers that are arguing for Project Gemini and Apollo 11. So if you feel like they have done their job in giving you useful feedback, please do upvote or give uh, accordingly high ratings to the peer teams that have spent enough time to give you useful feedback and help them uh, achieve a higher level of performance. So I'm going to run through how Skylab works by demoing uh, in three windows. Um, on the left hand side of the window will be demo student one in demo team one. And uh, on the right hand upper top corner, um, that will be demo two. 
demo team two, uh, student X. Okay, so um, this particular team is a peer team of uh, team one. So they will be evaluating uh, team one's project log and readme, and I'll show you what that looks like. The advisor for both teams, and let's say this is the evaluation group's advisor, will also have to evaluate uh, both teams, but um, in this case, we're only focusing on demo team uh, one. So, I'm going to show you what that looks like. By using three separate browsers. So, on the left hand side, I have a Google Chrome tab that's uh, logged in as Demo Student 1. Um, on the upper right, again, I have Safari that is running uh, Demo Student X for Demo Team 2. And at the bottom uh, right, we have a Firefox window uh, running the Demo Advisor. So, let's see how this works. So when you log in as Demo Student 1, uh, you will note that, um, which team you're a part of. And uh, you can uh, look at some particular information about this team. Okay, so there, your email address. Um, in this case, you have to use uh, NUS as your Open ID user. Okay, then you can go back to your home. Okay, and when you log in, you should be at this dashboard where there's three tabs. Okay, the submit project log, uh, which is what you're going to do for each of the milestones that is at T um, minus zero, so the time when you have to submit the evaluation. Then later on, when you have to evaluate other teams, when after they've made their project submissions, you go to evaluate other teams. We'll see that over here shortly. And submit feedback is where you go after all of your evaluations are done. That's also where you take a look at the feedback that teams have given you. Okay, so we're going to start by uh, doing milestone one for Demo Student 1. So when this starts, you'll be given two boxes to uh, enter in information about your project readme and log. So these are in HTML. You can format them whatever, however you want. So your project readme should contain uh, some information about the scope of your project, um, what types of uh, issues that you're trying to tackle, and in certain cases, um, the user stories, right, uh, which are basically uh, what you need to implement the Agile, right? So you have a set of user stories. And you can describe how far you've gotten them. So, um, as a person with a role, I want to do Y in order to accomplish Z. All right, something like that um, that I'm going to do a couple times. And uh, if you have all these sets of stories and you're good to go, then you can go ahead and um, detail more about what you're planning for the next milestone. And um, to understand how that works, we're going to look at the evaluation form in a minute for milestone one. The project log is where you keep information in rounded number of hours. So you don't have to indicate fractions of the time that you have spent on Orbital. Okay? And that means 130 hours per person on the team. So that's uh, 260 hours in total, but a minimum uh, per person. So this is the minimum for the team. But uh, even if one person spends 260 hours, that doesn't accomplish the task for both um, individuals. Each individual must have a minimum of 130 hours.
Okay, and how do you do that? Well, you can do some documentation in a table or something of that sort. So maybe I'll insert a table here. Um, let's see, maybe four by four table here, and I'm just going to insert some uh, information in each of these fields. See, I can't see this table very well. Okay, well, anyways, I'm going to delete what I have there and um, try to insert another table again. Let's hope this works this time. Okay, that looks a little better. So I might indicate, for example, uh, a time period, time and date. Okay, um, what did I do? Who did it? So maybe it's to into A. And student uh, 2. Okay, so for example, here I might say, oh, on the, the 11th of May, uh, I attended Orbital Day 1. And uh, so both student uh, 1 and 2 did that, so 8 hours each. Okay, and then um, on day 12, actually only my partner came. I didn't qualify for that. So, and he only came for us uh, ignition, which was in the afternoon, so that's four hours. Okay, and so what you want to do with this table is basically, um, let's see, can I insert? Yeah, uh, basically summarize how much time I've spent in total per person. Okay, and then argue whether that's going to be effective to um, get working for towards the completion of uh, your project. Uh, I forgot to detail at the beginning, you need to not only scope your project, but declare your current level of achievement and right so maybe I'll write that in the front so maybe for my project I'm just aiming for Vostok so I am not uh, adding uh, a lot of burden to what I need to do and of course you can change this at any one time so I might write maybe evaluate this in milestone to, to upgrade to project Gemini. Okay, something like this. Uh, you need to put that as there yeah, in here. Okay, so uh, in your project readme, please include your team name, uh, your student name, and in certain cases, hopefully, your team name and your project are uh, identically named, but some people. I think I've chosen team names that are different from their projects, and that's fine. Okay, so um, you can put all of these demographic details at the beginning, and then uh, describe these other parts in um, more detail. Okay, now for each of these, it's fine if you want to do your documentation for either the project log or the readme in a separate system, then you can just include it. Uh, you can do something like this instead. Uh, where you just add a pointer, right? I did my README documentation in a separate PDF file, which is available here. And so wherever you stick it on the web, uh, just make a link to it, and then uh, it'll be fine. Your uh, peers will have to be able to find it wherever it might be located. Okay. We don't host documents on Skylab currently, so um, you will have to provide it in either your own Dropbox or Google Drive, etc. Okay, so in this alternative case, um, you know your peers are just going to click on this link to get that document. Okay, 
So um, in the project log again, uh, you're basically putting information about what you've done. You're trying to convince your peers that that's a reasonable time, and also say we think we can accomplish uh, 140 hours in total, and you give some reason why because in June uh, both of us will be able to invest about 20 hours per week to make up the bulk of the uh, 140 hour requirement. Okay, so you need to give some justification whether you're on track. So in this particular README and project log that I've written, I haven't actually done anything yet past the first two days of Orbital. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten a lot farther than uh, what this README has done in just saying I, I've just attended liftoff and I'm planning to make up, uh, catch up in, in the June milestone. Okay, you also need a video link. So for example, if I have uh, a movie uploaded somewhere, or if I'm going to point uh, somewhere into a time offset in the ignition video, you can put it here. All right, so after that, we can submit. And you can see it's uh, created a table and all of that. And then you have to go back to your home. And uh, you can always edit uh, information that you've done. So you can go and edit what you've had and uh, clean things up. For example, okay, you want to make that something like a header and uh, other things that's uh, good to go. And uh, click submit to resend it. Okay. Okay. So when you look at the submissions here, uh, it's clear what's uh, going on. We're at the demo page, so we want to actually switch back to uh, the demo team, the team page. We want to switch back to the student view. So here again, you see the free tabs um, that's happened. Okay. Now we need to switch uh, points to the demo student, who is the peer team of this individual student. So we're going to cast our attention over here and uh, we're going to look at a particular evaluating other teams and so you can see here that um, you can see that a milestone one has been submitted by the demo team right which is the team on the left side so we can go ahead and view that documentation that should show me exactly what I typed in in the other window and you can see that here or I can start an evaluation. And I'm going to blow this screen up for a while okay, because it's important. This is the peer evaluation for uh, milestone one. So you can see what needs to be done. For each of these sections, you need to fill in um, a, see, the information that's there. So you can say whether you agree or strongly disagree or agree. These are just radio buttons that are being saved. Uh, about the project ideation. So I think there's a clear problem. Um, it doesn't um, really solve the problem yet and very importantly for this part you have to give some feedback at least write a minimum of one to two sentences and a maximum of 500 words or approximately one page here and say they've done a good job so far and I'm looking forward to seeing a more refined project scope in the next iteration, for example. All right? Same here, you can see the sections uh, that detail about the next sprint, uh, what things do, are the uh, is the team planning to implement, especially with respect to user stories? You can see here, so I can say, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with what they've done. Um, please give some written feedback. Again, you can fill in some things here. Um, I think that the user stories for um, the peers would be more detailed 
blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then similarly we have a question about whether you think it is going to create a minimum valuable product, an MVP by the end. I'm not that sure yet um, whether the team is doing that, and I can say why. Because... Okay, then the first section is on the project readme and log that basically evaluates how well you're doing that the, the your peer team is doing their project readme and log. Um, maybe they haven't done certain sections clearly, they didn't format it well, or other things that are related to just the documentation and not the content. Uh, you can uh, describe those things here. Okay. No comments in particular. But I think that it's cool that we used software and to do your readme instead of using Skylabs HTML editor. Okay, and this is the part that I was alluding to earlier. So uh, if you go back to the slides, right, I said here critical feedback for. Milestone 1 will show up immediately, uh, but for mil uh, Milestone 2 onwards, it will be released at a certain date. Uh, that's not by uh, particular design, it's just because we haven't been able to finish all of the implementation. So um, you can ignore some of this information, like this part about the advisors. Uh, it's from the old form, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, basically, whatever you write in both parts, the critical feedback and the overall evaluation, it is anonymized, it is sent back to the team, but because uh, if you're the only person who's made a submission to evaluate that team, um, the other team will know that it comes from you. Okay, and I'll show you why that is, okay? Some negative feedback. And your overall scores, maybe I say, ah, oh, not so bad yet. Um, looks like a Project Gemini, and you can ignore the publish button here. Okay, so at this point, I've made the submission. Um, it doesn't show up here because, of course, I haven't submitted my own milestone for Devil Team 2. But if I switch back to a student, you can see they've done the evaluation of the demo team. Okay, so each team, uh, whether it is the student X or student Y in this team, will need to uh, make a uh, evaluation of one of, of all of the other peer teams. So I've done it for milestone one for the demo team. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to just put it back up here. Okay, so we're going to go back to the demo advisor. This is what your advisors will see when they're evaluating your project. So uh, when they log in, they'll see that in fact the demo team has made their evaluation and I can start the evaluation. It's going to be a very similar process because basically they have to fill out the same exact form as what um, your peer teams are filling in. It's going to fill something in here so that we can get done with it. And again, it's advised that for each of these things, that um, for each of these peer evaluations, that you spend about 30 minutes um, looking through the documentation, viewing the videos when applicable, and then filling out the evaluation form. So it should take you roughly an hour and a half or two hours to do all of the peer evaluations at each milestone. Okay. So now the advisor has made the evaluation. You can see it's uh, something that uh, can be edited. Okay. And we're going to go back to our original student. You can see they still have their evaluation for that they've completed. They can still edit it.
but importantly when you go back to the evaluations uh, you can see what um, other people have said about your project so here you know, demo team 2 uh, if you remember what I wrote there you can see that it has appeared okay so that's fine uh, what you don't see uh, is of the other things. So if you look at the view evaluations, um, you can see both the public content and the private content. So you can see here, this was the uh, evaluation from the demo team. Okay, the advisor's evaluation should be in this part too. And then the evaluation of the private part, you can see uh, some critical feedback from this particular demo team uh, from team 0 it's anonymized so we don't actually know it's from demo team 2 but because demo team 2 is the only uh, team that has evaluated this particular team so far from the public content we would be able to match demo team 2 to team 0 okay so that's what I mean by this part where the critical feedback will show up immediately Okay, so for this, uh, you would be able to see both the public content and the private content for both of the evaluations for this demo team. Okay, so I wish you good luck for that. It's actually uh, should be fairly easy to use. Basically, once uh, you go to the Orbital website, okay, this is the main Orbital website, as you probably know. Okay, you just have to look at the left menu, come down to Skylab, which is the third link, click on that, and then click on login. Okay, and then you should be offered, uh, offered a page to log in using your NUS net credentials. Uh, I've already saved it, so it's already dumped me directly into the Orbital platform, the Skylab platform. Okay, so good luck to everyone, and I'll see you um hopefully on time with your evaluations for evaluation milestone one and one week later for your peer evaluations <laughs>